Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. We're very excited to have you here and thank, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. Today we're delighted to have Jane Coy as our presenter. Jane is an experienced teacher of many years as well as a primary literacy consultant. She's also the author of many educational texts for various publishers. Being a live webinar, you have the option to ask Jane and myself questions live. To do so, use the question chat box to type in any questions you have on the right-hand side of your screen. If you're on our live feed page, use the box below the video screen. All participants will be emailed a PD certificate for attending today. If you're sitting around in a staff room with fellow staff, make sure you email us a list of all your staff members' names and emails of those who attended. I hope you enjoy today's webinar, and Jane, take it away. Thanks, Richard. Well, let's look at some top teaching tools for inquiry-based learning from Foundation to Year 6. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. Most teachers will recognise this famous quote by Benjamin Franklin. Student engagement is a vital component of the learning process and structuring a unit of work using an inquiry-based learning model is an effective way to achieve this goal. Let's look at what is inquiry-based learning. Inquiry-based learning is a process of investigation that begins by posing a question, problem or scenario about real life concepts and or issues. The power of inquiry-based learning is that it aims to unlock thinking processes of students and enable them to learn through their own experiences by actively participating in the acquisition of knowledge and understandings. When students are involved in real life problem solving within the context of the set curriculum, they are given an opportunity to develop critical thinking, creative thinking and problem solving skills, whilst building independence and a sense of personal achievement. Let's look at how we link inquiry-based learning to literacy development. The steps involved in the inquiry-based learning process are directly linked to core understandings outlined in the literacy strand of the Australian Curriculum English Document, or ACE. So step one of the inquiry-based learning process is to ask. Students formulate their own questions about a fo focused topic. Now the ACE substrand, interacting with others, tells us that students learn how individuals and groups use language patterns to express ideas. For example, in Year 5 and 6, the specific one is ask, asking pertinent questions. Now step 2 of the inquiry-based learning process is to investigate where students investigate a range of relevant resources to locate answers to their focus questions. And the ACE substrand, interpreting, analysing and evaluating, says that students develop more sophisticated processes for interpreting, analysing, evaluating and critiquing ideas, information and issues from a variety of sources. Step three of the inquiry-based learning process is to create. Students build new understandings by linking and recording related information. And the ACE substrand, Creating Texts, states that students apply knowledge to create a range of spoken, written and multimodal texts that entertain, inform and persuade audiences by strategically selecting key aspects of a topic. Step four of the inquiry-based learning process is to discuss, where students communicate their learning to others. And the ACE substrand, Interacting with Others, states that students learn how to rehearse and deliver spoken and written presentations by appropriately selecting and sequencing linguistic and multimodal elements. So in this webinar, we're going to examine how you can incorporate specific teaching tools such as graphic organisers and applied thinking strategies to facilitate inquiry-based learning in your classroom and how they can be used as a stimulus to inspire a range of literacy activities. So let's start with part one, graphic organisers. What are graphic organisers? Well, they're powerful tools that provide an effective means of synthesising information in a visual way. They, they are designed to assist teachers in guiding students to generate and expand on their ideas creating a foundation for and promoting participation and engagement in learning experiences. Graphic organisers are very flexible as they can be used in a whole class or small group environment or be entirely student-centred across all year levels. They assist students to develop effective oral language reading and writing skills, core components of lit literacy acquisition. So let's start with 
KWL Charts. KWL Charts are graphic organisers that record what students already know about a topic, hence the K, what they want to learn or know about a topic, the W, and what they have learnt about the topic, the L. They assist students by confirming prerequisite knowledge, encourage them to set a purpose for reading or viewing a variety of texts to build on this prior knowledge, and then later reflecting on their gained understandings. Let's look at how a KWL chart could be used for an inquiry-based unit of study on the human body, with sample focus areas uh, in foundation to grade two, the five senses, or in years three and four, the respiratory system, or for years five and six, let's say human body systems. So in the K column, which is, what do I know about this topic? Students brainstorm words and phrases they associate with the topic. You could uh, establish some focus questions and these can be used to help the students contribute ideas. For example, F to two, how many senses do we have? Years three and four, what body parts help us breathe? Or years five and six, what systems are found in the human body? In the W column, what do I want to know about this topic? Students record what they want to learn about the topic by formulating focus questions. For example, F to two, how do I taste things? Years three and four, what is inside my lungs? Years five and six, what main bones make up my skeleton? Then we move on to the L column, and this is completed at the end of the unit of study. This is what did I learn about this topic? This is where students locate resources and an to answer their focus questions and record any other interesting information about the topic that they are studying. So let's look at some related literacy activities you could do with the KWL chart. In years F to 2, you could view the ZipTales ACE oral language module, likes and dislikes in foundation, and then discuss with students what they like or dislike to taste and smell. Then they could write a simple information report about the five senses. In years three and four, they could write an explanation text about how the respiratory system works and work in pairs to conduct breathing experiments and report their findings back to the class. In years five and six could create a board game using facts about the systems of the human body. They could write an information text about the systems of the human body using the ZipTales Write Time digital documentary, How to Write Information to Assist with Planning. The next one we're looking at is the graphic organizer Venn Diagram. Venn diagrams provide a means of visually representing the similar similarities and differences of two related things. Venn diagrams assist students develop skills in classifying and sorting information in a logical way. Here's an example of how a Venn diagram could be used for an inquiry-based unit of study on mammals. You could begin by generating age-appropriate focus questions about mammals. For example, what is a mammal? How are mammals different to other animals? How are certain mammals different and similar? You explain to students that a Venn diagram could be used to identify similarities and differences between mammals and other animals or between two mammals or types of mammals. For example, in years F to do, they could study cats and dogs, years three and four, koalas and kangaroos. And in years five and six, they could look at the similarities and differences between monotremes and marsupials, which is shown in this Venn diagram presented. So. You could see the Venn diagram is made up of two large ovals intersected and on one side we've got the monotremes which have specific uh, attributes like laying eggs, no teeth and some examples of echidna and platypus. On the right hand side we've got marsupials, uh, they give birth to live young, have a pouch, examples of kangaroos and koalas and in the middle of the Venn diagram there are attributes that are similar to both types of animals. They're both mammals, they're both warm-blooded they have hairy bodies and they produce milk. Some related lit literacy activities you could do with a Venn diagram. For F to two, you could design a poster about some of the body features of different mammals. They could write a simple imaginative text about a cat that thinks he or she is a dog. In years three and four, the students could write an imaginative text about a day in the life of a chosen mammal using the ZipTales Write Time digital documentary, How to Write a Story, to assist with their planning. They could also create an informative picture book for a younger class about the similarities and differences between koalas and kangaroos. For years five and six, students could write an information report about the different types of mammals and present it as a slideshow to an audience. 
Or they could write a persuasive text in response to the topic, monotremes are more interesting than marsupials. You could use the ZipTales ACE writing module arguments, years five and six, to assist with planning. The next graphic organiser we're looking at is a data grid. Data grids are tables designed to organise relevant information into specific areas. They cater perfectly to the inquiry process as students are required to ask by formulating focused questions about the topic, investigate by locating relevant resources to help answer their questions, create by transferring the information into an appro appropriate format, and then discuss by presenting their information to an audience. Data grids are very flexible as they can accommodate any number of questions and resources depending on the topic and year level. The following example shows how a data grid could be used for an inquiry-based unit of study on Antarctica. You could begin by generating focus questions appropriate to the year level. So with the topic Antarctica, we put the focus questions in the first column. For example, where is Antarctica? What is the climate like in Antarctica? What animals can survive in Antarctica and why? How can humans survive when visiting Antarctica? Then in the middle column, students locate a resource and write the name of the resource and then record any information from that resource in that middle column. Then in the, the next column, they locate a different type of resource and write the name of the resource and any information from that resource in the appropriate uh, uh, column and grid. So you could actually make it bigger or smaller depending on the year level with the data grid. So some related literacy activities you could do for data grid is in F2, view the ZipTales ACE oral language module. What do you think, years one and two? Then students could discuss their favorite animals from Antarctica. Students could draw and label 10 items they would pack in a suitcase to take on a trip to Antarctica and explain to an audience why each item was chosen. In years three and four, you could view the ZipTales ACE reading module graphic organizers, years three and four, then use a data grid to research information about an animal that lives in Antarctica. The students could then create a brochure that encourages people to travel to Antarctica for their next holiday. In years five and six, they could write a biographical text about some famous Antarctic explorers. They could create an imaginary recount about getting on a plane to Bali and ending up in Antarctica using the ZipTales Right Time digital documentary, How to Write Recounts to assist with their planning. The next graphic organizer we're looking at is the concept map. Concept maps use a clustering technique to visually display concepts of a focus area and the relationship between the ideas. You can begin with a main focus question and then branch out with subheadings related to the question. For each subheading, focus questions can then be formulated to begin the inquiry process. So let's look at how a concept map could be used for an inquiry-based unit of study on sustainability. So the focus question goes in the middle. For example, what are the issues that affect sustainability in our community? So the four subheadings are energy, local ecosystems, water conservation and pollution. And then you branch out with focus questions related to these subheadings. For example, for energy, how can we conserve energy in our local area? And why is it important to conserve energy? For water conservation, what can we do to improve water conservation in our local area? And how do we conserve water at school and home? For local ecosystems, your focus questions could be, how can we care for the ecosystems in our local area? And what are the different types of ecosystems? For pollution, what are the different types of pollution and how can we minimize pollution in our local area? Could be examples of focus questions you could generate on the concept map. So your related literacy activities for a concept map in F2, the students could list and draw five ways they could save water at home. They could create a diagram about the life cycle of an animal that lives in the local area. In years three and four, you could use the subheadings and headings from the concept map to plan and write an information text about sustainability. Or in groups, the students could write and perform a short play that encourages children to bring a wrapper-free lunchbox to school. They could view the ZipTales ACE oral language module group work to promote group cohesion. In years five and six, the students could write a persuasive text about one of the subheadings on the concept map. 
You could use the ZipTales ACE writing module, Digital Composition, to create a short presentation about a sustainability issue at school using digital technologies, for example, iMovie. So let's move on to the next graphic organiser, which is the flowchart. Flowcharts visually represent related steps in a process and are designed to break down these steps into a series of single events. They can be used to represent instructions, directions and cause and effect, and they can be linear or cyclical. Below is an example of how a flowchart could be used for an inquiry-based unit of work on natural disasters, which we would probably only do years three to six. Using the focus question, why does a volcano erupt? The single events are listed in sequence. For example, an underground rumbling, such as an earthquake, awakens the volcano. The next step, the volcano starts to shake or rumble. Then ash and molten rock, or magma, start to rise higher and higher. Next is magma, magma erupts through the volcano, opening and becomes lava. And finally, lava flows down the sides of the volcano. Some related literacy activities you could do with a flowchart. Let's look at uh, years F to 2. We'd probably do the sample topic weather as opposed to natural disasters. They, uh, the students could design a flowchart showing the steps involved in making a snowman, for example, or they could use a cycl cyclical flowchart to write about or draw the water cycle. Now back to natural disasters in year f 3 and 4. The students could use information from a flowchart to help plan and write an explanation text about the events leading up to a tsunami. They could view the ZipTales ACE reading module, Finding Out, to assist students with, assist them with creating an information brochure warning people about the causes of bushfires. In years 5 and 6, the students could write an explanation text about how an earthquake occurs using a flowchart to help plan their text. They could design a 3D model of a volcano and explain to an audience how it erupts. You could view the ZipTales ACE oral language module speaking to an audience to assist students with their oral presentation skills. The next graphic organiser we're looking at is a fishbone diagram. Fishbone diagrams are shaped like the skeleton of a fish and are used to visually organise possible causes or effects of a specific problem or question. They can be used in two ways. A cause could be written in the fish's head with possible effects listed along the bones or an effect could be written in the fish's head and the possible causes are then recorded along the fish's bones. Here's an example of how a cause style fishbone diagram could be used for an inquiry based unit of study on communication. So the focus question, the cause in the fish's head is how do smartphones impact our lives? So along the top lines of the upper, uh, the upper bone, sorry, of the, uh, the positive effects, they could, uh, the students could re record them. For example, it's easier to get in touch with others. Uh, smartphones can be used in emergencies. You can um, access the internet much easier and uh, get information when you need it. And then on the lower bones, they record the negative effects of smartphones. For example, they are expensive, uh, there's a possibility of radiation, or using the, a smartphone while drive, driving can cause car accidents, or the peer pressure involved to have the right kind of smartphone is also a negative effect. So some related literacy activities for a fishbone diagram in years F to 2. The students could role play in pairs what they could say to an adult who is using their smartphone when they're driving a car. Well, the students could write or draw about why it's important to know the emergency phone number 000 in Australia or 111 in New Zealand and explain the importance of that. In years three and four, students could work in small groups to role play a situation where children are pressuring one of their friends to get a smartphone or they could create an information pamphlet for adults explaining the do's and don'ts of using a smartphone. In years five and six, students could work in pairs or small groups to create a television advertisement addressing the benefits or the risks of smartphones, or they could write a persuasive text using the topic, children under 12 should not be allowed to have a smartphone. Use the ZipTales Right Time digital documentary, How to Write an Argument to assist with planning. So let's move on now to part two of the webinar, which is the thinking strategies section. Thinking strategies enable students to apply different levels of strategic thinking to a variety of learning situations. 
providing students with an opportunity to use higher order thinking assists in the development of critical and creative thinking, which are identified in the Australian curriculum as essential general capabilities. In other words, the skills, behaviours and attributes that students need to succeed in life and work in the 21st century. So the first thinking strategy we're looking at today is Bloom's Taxonomy. Bloom's Taxonomy requires students to use and apply high level thinking skills when studying a unit of work. Let's look at how you could use Bloom's Taxonomy for an inquiry based unit of study on the solar system. For each level of thinking, students formulate one or more questions. So let's look first in the first column, which is the levels of thinking. So the first one is knowledge, where the students recall facts about the topic. So some sample focus questions, uh, a sample focus question in F to 2 is how many planets are there, years 3 and 4, how many planets have moons, or year 5 and 6, what are the gas giants. The next level of thinking is comprehension, which is where the students interpret information. So a sample focus question for F to 2 could be why can't humans live on Mercury? Or years 3 and 4, why does the Earth's moon change its shape? Or for 5 and 6, how do the phases of the moon affect the ocean's tides? The next level of thinking in Bloom's taxonomy is application, where students apply learned information to new situations. So the sample focus questions for F to 2 could be how can I show the planets between the Earth and the Sun? Years 3 and 4, how can I demonstrate the Earth, Earth's rotation around the Sun? And years 5 and 6, how can I demonstrate a solar or lunar eclipse? The next level of thinking is analysis, where students examine information. So in F to 2, they could ask why are some, some planets hot and some are cold? In years 3 and 4, how are lunar and solar eclipses alike and different? And years 5 and 6, what is the Big Bang Theory? The next level of thinking is synthesis, where they construct creative ideas. So F to 2, you could look at what would you wear and take with you if you could visit Neptune. Years 3 and 4, how could I convince people to spend money to travel to the moon? Or years 5 and 6, how would you design a house for Mar on Mars for humans to survive in for a week? The final level of thinking for Bloom's taxonomy is evaluation, where the students make judgments about the topic. So in F to 2, your sample question could be, why is Earth the best planet to live on? In years 3 and 4, is it worth spending money on space exploration? Why or why not? In years 5 and 6, is it actually possible to live on Mars? Why or why not? And your related literacy activities for Bloom's Taxonomy, the students could create a variety of imaginative, informative or persuasive texts based on answers to the focus questions. And you could use Ziptail's ACE writing modules text types to assist re with refining knowledge of text purposes. Uh, you could also get the students to work in pairs or groups to investigate possible answers to the focus questions by using Ziptail's oral language module working in a group to as assist with establishing group dynamics. Now the next thinking strategy we're looking at to use in an inquiry based learning process are the thinkers keys. Tony Ryan's Thinker's Keys are a set of 20 activities designed to unlock the analytical, critical and creative thinking abilities of learners. Here are some examples on how selected Thinker's Keys could be used for an inquiry based unit of study on transport. So one of the Thinker's Keys is the reverse, where you place words such as cannot, never and not in sentences. So an example to do with transport could be what are 10 ways you could not travel overseas. Another of the keys is the what if. For example, what could be the consequences if there were no cars in the world? Another key is the looking at the disadvantages. So, for example, what are the disadvantages of train travel? Another key is looking at the variations. How many different types of transport could you use to get to school? The next key we look at is the question. So, you give the answer. For example, the answer is helicopter. What is the question? Then the next key could be the different uses. What are some of the different ways you could use a skateboard? Another key, the invention. How would you design a machine that helps people fly from their house to the shops? And the final key is the combination. How could you combine two types of transport, for example, a car and a boat, to create a new way of travelling? 
Some, relig- some related literacy activities you could use for looking at the thinker's keys could be that students present their answers to an appropriate audience and you could look at the ZipTales oral language modules oral reports to assist with their oral presentation skills or they could use digital technologies to present their information or answers using the ZipTales ACE writing modules digital text to assist with their multimedia presentation skills. So the next thinking strategy we'll look at is the multiple intelligences. Multiple intelligences were devised by Howard Gardner and they outline specific areas that cater for a broad range of skills and talents. Below are some examples of how the multiple intelligences could be used for an inquiry-based unit of study on Aboriginal culture. So we're looking at the multiple intelligences here in the first column and the possible focus questions in the next column. So some examples of focus questions for the visual spatial intelligence could be what is the meaning behind traditional dot paintings, who are some famous Aboriginal artists, or what is the symbolism of the Aboriginal flag. For the verbal linguistic intelligence, some possible focus questions could be how could I effectively retell a Dreamtime story to an audience? How could I write my own story using the traditional Dreamtime structure? What Aboriginal words have been used to name significant places in Australia? For the logical mathematical intelligence, we could look at these focus questions. What events would I put on a timeline of events pertinent to Aboriginal culture? How did white settlement affect the number of Aboriginal languages in use today? For the body kinetic intelligence, why are ceremonial dances important to Aboriginal people and who are some famous Aboriginal sports people? The next intelligence is the musical rhythmic. What musical instruments do Aboriginal people use? How would I compose a song that reflects the importance of having respect for other cultures? The interpersonal intelligence. Why is kinship important to Aboriginal culture? What role does group participation play in traditional ceremonies? The intrapersonal intelligence. How are traditional Aboriginal customs and beliefs similar or different to those in your own life? And how would it feel to have your way of life changed forever? The final intelligence, the naturalist. The questions could be, how does Aboriginal culture rely on the natural environment for food and medicine? What places in Australia are considered sacred sites to Aboriginal people and why? So some related literacy activities could be to generate a list of acquired vocabulary for spelling and grammar activities, or study the structures and features of Dreamtime narratives using the Zip Tales genre story, The Rainbow Serpent, found in Myths and Legends. So the final thinking strategy we're looking at today is the De Bono Six Thinking Hats thinking strategy. The Six Thinking Hats, as devised by Edward De Bono, present a way of thinking that can help solve problems and examine issues. The aim of the hats is to focus on separate components of a problem in order for the thinker to make clearer choices in finding a solution. So here's an example of how the thinking hats could be used for an inquiry-based unit of study on health and well-being. So the focus question could be, how can we improve the general health and well-being of the students at our school? So we look at the white hat first, which is seeking information and listing facts. So what are we already doing at our school to improve student health and well-being? The next one is the blue hat, which looks at planning, monetary and thinking about thinking. How can we make sure that what we plan to do in the school is a a success? The next hat is the yellow hat, looking for the advantages. What would be the advantages of this project? Then the black hat, looking at the disadvantages. What could be some of the disadvantages of this project? The next one is the green hat, which is being creative, generating alternative ideas or solutions. So the students could look at what kinds of things could we do to help improve the health and well-being of students at our school. Finally, the red hat is for expressing feelings. How do I feel about this project? How will the students at our school feel about what we we are doing? And some related literacy activities for De Bono's hats could be to explore how certain ways of speaking, for example, criticising or bullying, affects the well-being of others. And you could use the ZipTales Oral Language F to 6 modules expressing opinions to look at how language impacts others' feelings. The students could also create print advertisements to encourage students in the school to make healthy eating choices. 
So, happy planning. This webinar has endeavoured to equip you with a variety of effective teaching tools to use when planning and implementing a unit of inquiry in your classroom. Ideally, their use will increase motivation and engagement levels in your students and result in some valuable learning opportunities leading to successful outcomes. Over to you, Richard. Thanks very much, Jane. That was great. Now, look, we do have some questions, so let's go to, the, to those straight away. Uh, question one is from Hamish in New Zealand, and his question to Jane is, have you investigated how it fits into the New Zealand, New Zealand curriculum? Okay, that's a great suggestion, Hamish. I haven't actually looked at the New Zealand curriculum as yet, but I'm planning on doing so in the next few days. So what we can do is have I can have a look at that for you and, and work out how inquiry-based learning can fit into the New Zealand curriculum. And, and Richard could send out some emails to New Zealand teachers who are interested in that information. But thank you, that's a great idea. I've, I've only studied the Australian curriculum at this stage, but looking forward to having a look at the New Zealand curriculum. Thanks very much, Jane. Okay, n another question from New Zealand, Rachel, Rachel Olson. How can I use graphic organisers to activate prior schema? Okay, Rachel, well, we could have a look at, uh, for example, I know the KWL chart really does lend itself to activating prior schema in that with the first column when you talk about what the, the students already know about the topic. But some other ideas, of course, you could use the concept map where you just have one main topic in the middle of the of the, the map at the start and then you could actually uh, fill out the subheadings and extra add extra bubbles for whatever the, the students are talking about and, and what they already know about a particular subject. So in the old days we called it brainstorming of course uh, for those who remember. And another idea you could um, use a graphic organiser for activating prior schema could be the Venn diagram where you just uh, display a Venn diagram and talk about the similarities and differences of for example uh, animals, the one that we've spoken about in the webinar and rather than having the information already there the students could just uh, excuse me, talk about what they already know about those uh, animals, what's similar and different about them. So you could use that Venn diagram um, at maybe at the beginning of a unit and then at the end of the unit you could use it again and just to see what, what understandings and um, new, new knowledge that they've acquired throughout the unit. Just a couple of ideas there. Thanks very much, Jane. And I think we've got time for one more question. This comes from James Richardson in Victoria. He says, or he asks, can any of these tools assist with specific literacy skills? Thanks, James. Look, that's a great question. Uh, we could look at uh, particularly the graphic organisers again. Uh, if you're looking at uh, text types in literacy, a good idea uh, for that is to use a flowchart, looking at the steps, uh, particularly writing a certain text type, what steps you need to take to get that text type under control. Another idea could use, again, the concept map of looking at uh, a particular literacy skill like nouns or verbs or something to do with grammar or punctuation and just talking about what the students know about those particular uh, skills and learning and building on that. And of course, the Venn diagram, yet again, we could use that uh, in looking at a particular text, uh, looking at the similar similarities and differences of characters in a story. And a final idea on the thinking strategies uh, side of it, you could use Bloom's taxonomy to look at uh, literal and inferential comprehension skills in a text, uh, developing questions of to do with a particular book or novel that you're studying um, that really lends itself to that uh, particular literacy skill. Thank you very much, Jane. Look, unfortunately, we've got no time for any more questions, uh, but thanks for those questions. Um, look, uh, the other couple of things I'd like to say very quickly in, in finishing is, would you be able to email us your fellow staff to get their P PD certificates? They'll be going out tomorrow uh, but we need their emails, of course, to be able to send it to them individually. And that gives them the, uh, the certificate sh saying they've attended this webinar. Um, the certificates and the replay, because the full replay of the whole webinar will be available, uh, will be emailed through to all participants tomorrow. <coughs> Pardon me. The other thing that will come through is a, a separate document called Literacy Resources. Uh, that's the, the things that Jane's been talking about as the specifics, but they're spelled out uh, word by word in something else we'll send to you tomorrow. 
Well, thanks, every, uh, thanks very much for attending. Thank you very much to Jane for coming in. Thanks, Richard. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for your time today. All the, ver all the very best and goodbye.